The fastest wind speed ever recorded on Earth was related to a hurricane gust. On April 10, 1996, tropical cyclone Olivia was passing by Barrow Island, Western Australia. At one moment, the storm reached the speed of a Category 4 hurricane, 254 miles per hour. That's faster than a Formula 1 racing car. You can probably imagine how much damage this kind of wind can cause. The only windstorm faster than that is a tornado. The air inside a whirlwind can move at a speed of 300 miles per hour. Unfortunately, there's no sure way to measure tornadic winds. Weather instruments never survived the experience. Oh, and licking your finger and sticking it up in the wind to measure speed also isn't a good idea here, unless you don't mind losing your arm or worse. Here are some more numbers. 35 miles per hour and more, that's the speed of the average blizzard. 50 to 60 miles per hour, that's how fast a severe thunderstorm moves. More than 74 miles per hour is the speed of a powerful tropical hurricane. Up to 400 miles per hour? Wait, do such speeds exist? Yep, but you need to travel to Jupiter to see a storm that speedy. The Great Red Spot is an enormous storm raging in the southern hemisphere of the gas giant. Its top parts are towering more than 5 miles above the surrounding cloud tops. The storm's almost three times as wide as our planet. In 2017, NASA's Juno space probe managed to collect lots of data about the red spot. And it turned out that the monster of a storm went more than 200 miles down into the planet's atmosphere. That's 30 to 100 times deeper than any ocean on Earth. But since these measurements were most likely imprecise, the storm's true roots can be reaching even deeper. The Great Red Spot is colder than the rest of the atmosphere, and Jupiter's temperatures are minus 234 degrees Fahrenheit in its upper cloud layers. The closer it is to the core, the hotter it gets. But the highest temperatures ever recorded on the planet were in the atmosphere right above the Great Red Spot. There, the heat can reach 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than lava on our planet. The storm's extreme conditions and turbulence produce gravitational and sound waves. These waves might be responsible for the superheating. The storm itself is also warmer at its bottom than at the top. If you found yourself at its center, you wouldn't be too impressed. But on the edges, the wind speed reaches 300 to 420 miles per hour. That's faster than Earth's tornadoes. Now, this will help you picture the immense force of such winds. On Earth, the wind doesn't have to be faster than 60 miles per hour to lift a person as heavy as 170 pounds from the ground. A wind as fast as 75 miles per hour can uproot large trees, peel off roofs, break windows, and turn over mobile homes. When the wind speed reaches 150, it can send cars flying. Now picture the havoc a storm as powerful as the Great Red Spot can cause on our planet. But could such an enormous anti-cyclone occur on Earth? Luckily, not. Our planet doesn't have the unique conditions needed for the storm to form. Scientists faced lots of challenges when they were trying to understand the mystery that was the Great Red Spot. And it was mostly the fault of the storm's home planet. It's more than a thousand times larger than Earth and over 300 times as massive. Jupiter is a gas giant, which means it consists mostly of fill in the blank. Around the planet's core, there's an ocean of liquid hydrogen. And the atmosphere is also mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. That means Jupiter doesn't have any solid ground, the only thing that could make the storm weaken. Without any friction, the storm has already been churning for centuries. The hot gases in the planet's atmosphere are always moving, rising, falling, and swirling. Just like on our planet, when cooler and hotter gases mix and merge into one another, they form giant circling storms. Astronomers think that once, several enormous storms came together and created the Great Red Spot. And now, it keeps raging by constantly drawing cool gases from below and hot gases from above. Plus, this monster of a storm absorbs other smaller vortices. They make the Great Red Spot even more powerful. Unfortunately, thick clouds on Jupiter don't allow people to see what's going on in the planet's lower atmosphere. Astronomers have been speculating on what may lie beneath the Great Red Spot for decades. Could it be a massive volcano? Unlikely. Jupiter's mostly gas. 
That's why it doesn't have a crust that could crack and release scorching hot stuff from the planet's interior. Several theories try to explain why the storm has its trademark color. It varies from whitish and pale salmon to orange and brick red. Some scientists believe the answer lies below the great red spot, closer to the planet's surface. A colorless layer of ammonium hydrosulfide might be reacting with cosmic rays or the UV radiation coming from the sun. This somehow gives the spot its pretty red color. But so far, it's just a theory. Astronomers have been observing the Great Red Spot since the 1830s. And for the first time, the storm was spotted in 1665 and described as the permanent spot. In other words, the storm is almost 400 years old. Strangely, it's been shrinking in size since the beginning of the 21st century. In 2019, it began flaking at the edges, with smaller pieces breaking off and vanishing. If this process continues, by 2040, the Great Red Spot will become circular, or it may disappear altogether. The storm isn't only getting smaller, it's also growing taller and getting a more intense orange hue. It's not completely clear why it's happening. Might be because of a chemical reaction. It occurs when some new material rises to the top layers of the atmosphere from below. The Great Red Spot might be the most famous storm in the solar system, but it's by no means the only one. Even on Jupiter, there's a bit less known Little Red Spot. One more anticyclone, but smaller in size. Well, when I say smaller, I mean the thing's not as large as its big sister. But it's still about the size of Earth. Recently, the highest wind speed inside the Little Red Spot has increased up to 400 miles per hour. A storm as wide as our planet rages on Saturn. It's called the Great White Spot. The storm has a tail of white clouds encircling the entire planet. It occurs every 30 years or so, when Saturn's northern hemisphere tilts toward the sun. This storm indeed starts as a spot, but then it stretches in length. Astronomers have figured out that the Great White Spot is actually a huge system of thunderstorms. At the peak of the storm, lightning can flash more than 10 times per second. But the main mystery about the Great White? It's where it gets its energy from. Some scientists think it may be powered by the sun. Others argue that the storm's cloud pattern only makes sense if there's an internal heat source that can power the winds. Great Dark Spots on Neptune are massive storms that form in areas with high atmospheric pressure. That's different on Earth. Here, storms appear when the pressure is low. Around the spot's edges, the wind speeds can reach 1,300 miles per hour. Astronomers have observed six dark spots on Neptune so far. These powerful storms get born deep in the planet's atmosphere. And the darker a storm is, the brighter the methane clouds around it are. Another monster-sized storm raging on Saturn looks pretty much like a hurricane or typhoon on our planet. It has an eye and spiraling clouds surrounding it. But compared to Earth's hurricanes, the one on the ring planet is titanic. On Saturn, the eye of the storm is up to 1,250 miles across. The bright clouds closer to the edges of the hurricane are moving at a speed of 330 miles per hour. But one of the most unusual things about this storm is its shape. It has six sides and is known as the hexagon. When astronomers saw the first images with the vortex, they did a double take. The thing was just too similar to our storms. And still, the one whirling on Saturn has an eye that's almost 20 times larger than any people have seen on Earth. The storm also moves four times faster than hurricane winds on our planet. Saturn's atmosphere has little water vapor. How the bizarre hexagon storm is getting by in such conditions is a mystery. Plus, unlike the constantly drifting hurricanes on Earth, the one on Saturn seems to have nowhere to go. For some inexplicable reason, it's stuck at the planet's North Pole.